G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video we're going to talk about the different classes of additives and kind of what they do for the system and we're going to look at it in a, in a pretty general way. So what kind of different additive classes are there? Well we're going to group them arbitrarily into three different groups. So we've got the performance modifiers, the lubricant protectors and the surface protectors. So performance modifiers would include pore point dispressants, VI improvers, and seal swell agents. Lubricant protectors are oxidation inhibitors, metal deactivators, and foam inhibitors. And surface protectors are rust and corrosion inhibitors, detergents and dispersants, anti-wear agents, and friction modifiers. So we'll do a sort of a really brief overview of what each of these do. So let's start with the performance modifiers and specifically the pore point depressants. So what these do is improve cold temperature performance. And we need that because in most, particularly mineral lubricants, what we find is that at normal operating temperatures, these will operate perfectly fine. So they'll pour quite well, they'll act in the operation just fine. But if we were to reduce these down to colder temperatures, maybe freezing or sub-freezing, um, what we find is that when we go to pour them out, really kind of nothing happens shake the bottle a little bit, still nothing happens. And that's because there are kind of waxy components to crude oils. Um, and at cold temperatures, these, if you like, solidify or crystallize and may affect the, the pore performance um, of the lubricant. When I say pore performance, I mean P-O-U-R. So the way that we fix that is through the use of pore point depressants, a special additive class which can help us at low temperatures. All right, then we've got VI improvers. These improve the viscosity stability with temperature. So one thing that we know, oil viscosity and temperature with lubricants, you know, we start off um, with some kind of viscosity and the viscosity gets lower as we go to higher temperatures. Um, different viscosity grades will enable you to uh, kind of jump up a viscosity over that temperature range. But if you're using a similar base stock, then uh, they're going to be aligned with each other. So at low temperatures, we have some viscosity, and as we get to higher temperatures, that viscosity is going to drop. Well, we can, if you like, flatten that curve through the use of VI improvers. I've already talked about this in a previous video, but effectively what it means is that we can take a 0W um, and have it perform like a 0W at cold temperatures, and like a 20 grade at warm temperatures. All right, seal swell agents. These help prevent elastomer deterioration in service. We need that because elastomers need to swell to seal effectively. And too much swell can soften the seal material to the point um, where it actually starts to leak. Uh, so the base oil and the seal material compatibility is super essential. There were some really early problems um, with some early synthetic lubricants. So um, early versions of synthetic engine oils, for example, were ester-based. And unfortunately, the seals in uh, vehicle engines at the time were also ester-based, and there was a uh, compatibility problem there. And so synthetic lubricants kind of gained this, if you like, uh, unfounded reputation for causing leaks in older engines but it was largely a compatibility issue. All right, then we go on to the surface protectors. So with rust and corrosion inhibitors, what we're trying to do is limit the uh, surface area contact between the lubricant and the metal. So in this case, uh, what we would have is surface acting additives that can bond to the surface of the metal and prevent, in this case, copper from oil coolers exchanging with the lubricant and uh, becoming sites for um, that promote oxidation of the oil. We then also have detergents and dispersants. These are two slightly different classes of additives that perform a similar but also quite different function. Uh, so what these do is um, if you have two soot particles, for example, soot in itself is not a problem, but soot does this thing which is called agglomeration, which is where the soot particles start to stick together. And if you get enough of them sticking together, they can almost form an abrasive kind of sand-like uh, particle. So to keep them apart from each other, we have these, again, surface-acting uh, detergents or dispersants. 
um, that can bond to the surface and kind of encapsulate it, which prevents it from uh, bonding with any other particles. And it can then get carried to the filters where it can then be removed. Detergents are slightly different. So dispersants keep uh, particles away from each other. Detergents actually have sort of a keep clean function and can clean surfaces, um, but they act in very similar ways. Just uh, dispersants tend to be a much higher molecular weight. Then we've got anti-wear agents. Well, what these do is they prevent the wear of surfaces by forming a sacrificial barrier. So really common in engine oils. Um, ZDDP is probably the most well-known one where it forms this 50 to 150 nanometer um, glass, if you like, uh, polyphosphate um, sacrificial layer uh, between engine components. Um, and that helps protect, particularly where there's um, boundary or, or mixed lubrication regimes around things like cams and cam followers. Then you've got the lubricant protectors. So we've got oxidation inhibitors. There are a whole class of typically aminic or phenolic additives um, that help prevent base oil degradation. So what effectively happens is it's it's almost like, uh, well, the most basic oxidation reaction of a, of a hydrocarbon would be methane burning. So here I've got CH4 and some oxygen molecules. And what will happen is that there's a... a an oxidation process that goes on and that chemical exchange produces carbon dioxide and water. Actually what's happening in lubricants is the same process on a larger scale but it's exactly the same thing that happens with cooking of a, of a cooking oil. So at high temperatures and with um, interaction with oxygen uh, we get a breakdown of the base oil um, and some of the additive package as well and oxidation inhibitors help to um, prevent that from occurring or at least slow down the process. Then we've got metal deactivators. So going back to our corrosion inhibition, um, if you've already got copper ions present uh, within the lubricant, um, what these can help to do is actually, uh, if you like, neutralize those ions to prevent them um, being uh, sites for oxidation. So. So metal ions, for example, are oxidation accelerants or they're catalysts for oxidation. And so metal deactivators can help slow down that process. And lastly, we've got foam inhibitors. So uh, foam inhibitors are uh, a really interesting uh, class of additive. And what they help do is break surface tension of air bubbles. So let's say, for example, I had an air bubble form and it's likely going to rise to the top. So here I'm showing the if you like the surface of the lubricant and here we're going to have a bubble rise to the top. These um, uh, foam inhibitors, what one will do is bond itself to the surface of the bubble and these uh, additives or this additive class has really, really low surface tension. And so what happens at the surface is that it kind of stretches out um, to, to such that it's really thin and eventually that helps to break um, the, the surface of the bubble and then the bubble pops. All right, so that was a really, really quick rundown of all the different classes of additives, but I hope that helps frame uh, an understanding of what all the different additives are. And um, when you hear them talked about by your lubricant representative, you'll kind of have an un a basic understanding of their function. This has been Lubrication Explained.